CalDigit's Element 5 Hub is the follow-up to its Thunderbolt 4 enabled Element Hub, but this time with the addition of Thunderbolt 5 slash USB 4 V2 connectivity. The CalDigit Element 5 Hub features a total of 9 ports, gaining 2 additional 10 gigabits per second USB-C ports, while only losing one of the USB-A ports featured on the unit's predecessor. Folks, if you're looking for a compact Thunderbolt 5 enabled hub that features lots of USB-C connectivity options, then CalDigit's Element 5 Hub is worth considering. So let's take a look at the CalDigit Element 5 Hub specifications. First of all, you get four Thunderbolt 5 slash USB 4 V2 ports that max at 80 gigabits per second. You also get two 10 gigabits per second USB-C ports, three 10 gigabits per second USB-A ports, and one DC input, 20 volts at nine amps. Design and build quality. Unboxing the CalDigit Element 5 feels very similar to its predecessor in terms of build and design. In fact, the E5 features almost exactly the same dimensions, except for the fact that it's just slightly taller, 18 millimeters versus 25.5 millimeters. And it also weighs a hair more, 0.18 kilograms versus 0.20 kilograms. But build material wise, the unit is completely unchanged. And like most CalDigit products, the Element 5 is comprised primarily of aluminum and features a set of detachable non-slip to keep it well planted on a desktop surface. It also features a reversible design so you can plug it into the left side of your Mac or the right side of your Mac in the case that you're using a MacBook Pro. So what comes in the box? Well, you get the Element Hub, you get a Thunderbolt 5 cable, you get two rubber feet strips alongside the hub and feet strips. CalDigit includes a 0.8 meter passive Thunderbolt 5 cable, a power cord, and a power adapter that's 180 watts versus the 150 watt power plant included with the original hub. The extra power is actually important here because the E5 now provides up to 90 watts of host charging versus the 60 watts provided by its predecessor. And this is a great option for those with Macs that can gulp down more power like the 16 inch MacBook Pro which can charge up to 140 watts. Bonus points to CalDigit for reducing the size of the Element 5 power brick by 40% while simultaneously boosting its power output. So let's take a look at the CalDigit Element 5 Hub power delivery stats. You get up to 90 watts of host charging. You get downstream Thunderbolt 5 slash USB 4 V2, five volts at three amps. Also all the USB-A ports provide 7.5 watts, five volts at 1.5 amps. And the remaining USB-C ports also provide 7.5 watts of power as well. The Element 5 also supports offline charging, which lets you charge connected devices even when there's no host computer connection. Now Thunderbolt 5 is not a requirement, but it is super nice. The Mac Mini with M4 Pro chip features three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the rear that are capable of connectivity up to 120 gigabits per second via Thunderbolt 5 or USB 4 V2. And each port resides on its own individual bus, allowing for full performance without an adjacent connection affecting its neighbor. The Thunderbolt 5 ports on the M4 Pro Mac Mini are fully backwards compatible as well, and their bandwidth needs will dynamically match the type of device connected on the fly. For example, when connecting a Thunderbolt 4 capable device, the link speed reports 40 gigabits per second, whereas when connecting a Thunderbolt 5 device like the OWC Envoy Ultra External SSD, the link speed reports 80 gigabits per second. In situations when connecting a display that requires bandwidth boost, the link speed can go as high as 120 gigabits per second. That being said, even if you don't have one of the latest Macs with Thunderbolt 5, the Element 5 remains backward compatible with Thunderbolt 4 Macs, PCs and tablets, Thunderbolt 3 Macs, and USB. USB 4 connectivity. In other words, you don't have to upgrade your Mac right now, but the Thunderbolt 5 access will be ready whenever you do. It also means that for the Mac mini, you can connect it to the front USB-C ports, which are not Thunderbolt compatible, but still have access to the extra expandability that the hub affords. To set the standard of what to expect, I directly connected this drive to the M4 Pro Mac Mini via one of its rear Thunderbolt 5 ports. And I wanted to set a baseline to see how the direct connection would compare to the connections through the hub. And as you can see here from system information, the link speed reports 80 gigabits per second, double that of Thunderbolt 4. As you can see from the Blackmagic disk speed test, the results for the Envoy Ultra did not disappoint at all. If you have high speed storage needs for video applications, then this drive will be more than enough to handle your needs for basically any quality of video that you can throw at it. Trust me, it's ridiculously fast. Now we're going to connect the OWC Envoy SSD to the Mac Mini via the original CalDigit Element Hub, which is Thunderbolt 
4. So this test alone illustrates why a Thunderbolt 5 enabled hub like the CalJJ Element 5 is beneficial because if you try to connect the Envoy Ultra to an older Thunderbolt hub, it's going to work, but its speed is going to be downgraded to 40 gigabits per second, significantly limiting the true capability of such a drive. So you basically just be wasting the performance. And you can see evidence of this by taking note of the 40 gigabits per second link speed in the system information details. And here is how the OWC Envoy Ultra performs when connected to the older Thunderbolt 4 CalDigit Element Hub. You can see that the performance is significantly hindered by the lack of bandwidth. I mean, it's not even comparable to the direct connection. So finally, let's connect the Envoy Ultra to the Mac Mini via the CalDigit Element 5 Hub. System information reports an 80 gigabits per second link speed as expected. And you will notice the massive difference in performance when the Envoy Ultra is not bottleneck by the lack of bandwidth, but is instead connected to the Thunderbolt 5 element hub. The speed here is much improved with read speeds essentially matching a direct connected drive and write speeds while a little bit slower, more than double the speed of what it was when connected to the Thunderbolt 4 hub. And for this brief test, we can see that a Thunderbolt 5 enabled hub can be absolutely worth it if your setup is complex enough to where you need more physical ports than a machine like the Mac mini provides. Just keep in mind that the amount of logical bus availability remains the same. So connecting the CalJJ Element 5 means that your Mac now has access to additional Thunderbolt ports, but the bandwidth for all the devices connected to the Element 5 hub is limited to the single Thunderbolt bus on the port that it's connected to. So just keep that in mind. And as far as display connectivity is concerned, you know with macOS, it's sort of a mixed bag when it comes to external displays. There's all sorts of little things you have to kind of keep in mind, but for the most part, if you're just having a normal setup, it's gonna work fine. I have my ASUS ProArt 5K display connected with no problem. You can have multiple Pro Display XDRs connected. You can have multiple studio displays connected, etc. But you do want to watch the fine print because it can get complicated depending on your exact setup. And when you connect bandwidth intense monitors to the Element 5 Hub, it will enable bandwidth boost in order to prioritize displays and provide up to 120 gigabits a second of performance. So this will allow for higher refresh rate displays to connect, etc. So the bottom line is this, if you have a Mac or you plan on buying a Mac with Thunderbolt 5 and you have peripherals with Thunderbolt 5 connectivity and you could benefit from that extra bandwidth, then it makes sense to consider the CalDigit Element 5 Hub. And this is especially true if you find yourself running low on physical ports. For instance, with the Mac Mini, you only get three Thunderbolt 5 ports. You can find the CalDigit Element 5 for a little under $300 at various retailers. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with the 9to5Mac.